Welcome back guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can save thousands of pounds or dollars depending on where you're from, uh, whatever currency you use, how you can save a lot of money keeping a lot of reptiles, but not just keeping the reptiles, but also keeping them in the best naturalistic setups, fully bioactive setups, fully arboreal, loads of decor, and we're going to show you right now. Let's start with number one on the list. Second hand. There's a lot of stuff you can buy that's second hand that you don't really need to pay big prices for. You've got the likes of this enclosure here. This is my boa constrictor Rosie. She actually came to us as a rescue and the enclosure came with her. So it was a free enclosure. Down here, Diego, our bearded dragon again, fully naturalistic setup. That enclosure was custom built. It cost me less than 20 pounds to actually build it because I found all the materials at work. I just paid for the glass, a little few of the runners, a few of the vents, nothing special like that. Everything you can buy second hand. There's a few things you can't skimp on. There's stuff like lighting, heating, thermostats. Don't skimp on them, buy them properly. There is a little um, discount that I can give you a little bit later throughout the video regarding that, just to get you 10% off the price of some of those stuff. Up here, Mushu. That one came from a reptile rescue, Cheshire Reptile Rescue. They are linked in the description down below. Uh, that one, I think I paid £10 for that enclosure there. I've gave it a lick of paint and sorted it out and put a new floor in it and it's cost me no nothing really. But I mean, a three foot enclosure, you'd pay £80 for a three foot enclosure on sale as well, reptile. That one, a tenner. I mean, all of our enclosures, all of them, all them ones there, this one just here, and that big one just there, all have been second hand or custom built. That one there was basically two wardrobes I just bodged together to do that and I paid about 20 quid for the glass. It's so easy to find stuff like that second hand. Check all your second hand apps. You've got pre-loved pets in the UK, you've got Spock, you've got loads of second hand sort of websites, eBay the lot. Check them out, you're bound to find some enclosures a lot cheaper. If you're really short of money and your electric bill's costing that little bit too much and you wanna save on a bit of electric, see your electric timers, the ones that you can like turn the lights on automatically 12 hours on, 12 hours off. You can always knock half an hour off that time, which will save you that little bit of extra cash. Over the 15 years that the animal's gonna be alive, that is actually gonna save you quite a bit of money in the long run. Just a little one you were thinking about. Number three, discount codes. We'll get straight onto the discount codes. If you want to swell reptile in the UK, just Google it, they're all over Facebook, they're absolutely everywhere, and type in NE10INF. That'll get you the Northern Exotics 10% discount on all products at the checkout. It's also worth looking into some of your other bigger YouTubers, the um, Dave Kaufman and stuff like that. They've got loads of discount codes in their description as well. So every time you're watching a video, just check the description. You never know what you might find. Number four, is DIY substrate. That's uh, this stuff just here. As you can tell uh, by the size of the tub, we've got quite a lot. And why have we got quite a lot? Because we go through quite a lot. It's the substrate. This is our tropical mix that you've just seen. So down here, it lets off the humidity slowly throughout the day. It's also great for drainage. So it drains through the layers really quickly, absorbs into the substrate. Like we're talking about the water here. So the water drains through the substrate into the drainage layer. When it's in the drainage layer, it evaporates up and out the drainage layer through the substrate layers. It nutri it's nutritious for your plants. It's nutritious for the animals. It's a healthy air humidity for the animals to breathe in. It's just an absolutely amazing mix. You can also do it for arid species as well, just like our bearded dragon down there, our leopard gecko, our savannah monitor. They've all got the arid species of substrate that we make. This is our own mix. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube on how to make substrate depending on whether it's arid substrate or whether it's tropical substrate, you can just do a general little search. You're bound to find loads, including some of our videos. If you want to see how to make this tropical mix that we do, we obviously keep an awful lot of it simply because we've got that big build to do just there. We like to add a little bit more into various substrates. This morning gecko enclosure is going to have the pond taken out eventually and we're going to have a full substrate bottom. If you want to see how to make this, I'll leave a video link just up there. Just click on that and that'll show you everything you need to know for how to make this and save yourself an absolute fortune making it. Number five is small companies. You can go on Facebook and just ask any of the big groups, does anybody know where I can get this? Don't say it's cheaper, because then you're gonna start getting all the Facebook haters saying, eh, you can't afford reptiles if you can't afford that, and so on and so on. But small companies, so you like to, you can pay fortune for all these sort of exoterra enclosures. And to be honest, in my opinion, the exoterras are the best. I really like the exoterras, but there are smaller companies. I mean, this enclosure here, you'd spend around about 45 pound on that. Whereas if you go to the Tropical Factory UK, you can buy another enclosure that's exactly the same quality, if not a little bit better, 
it's just so much cheaper. This is £30 and it's the same size. Same as, uh, let's have a look at this one. Mantis Den UK. Again, you can find them on Facebook. All their links will be down in the description down below. This is a front opening enclosure. We've got a big build lined up for that to do with some beetles. You've also got stuff like these enclosures just up here. The Tropical Tube. Again, Tropical Factory UK. Again, the link will be in the description down below. They're a lot cheaper than paying for all these sorts of enclosures. If you're a little bit unsure about going second hand, these small companies will do absolute amazing for you. My passion in life, and what I'm pretty well known for throughout the YouTube algorithm, is Breed Row Live Food. You can save an absolute fortune and become totally free of the live food bill by breeding your own live food. Now it can take up to about a year to really get yourself self-sustained on live food. That's how long it took me. Now for me, we've done loads and loads and loads of videos to do with breed your own live food, whether it be dubia roaches, mealworms, superworms. I'll leave a full playlist uh, just up there and there's bound to be a video on there to do it. We've even shown you how to save money breeding dubia roaches. So like you've got the full setup and all that sort of stuff, but how can you make that actual cheaper? So we've done that as well. Up here, we've got my mealworms. Now, I am totally self-sustained with live food. That's why the majority of my animals are live food eaters. They are insectivores mainly. That's why I've not got a tortoise yet, because I've not quite mastered how to actually um, grow my own vegetables and stuff. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but I'm not quite there yet. So I'm still working on that one, but a tortoise may be coming to the channel at some point here now my mealworm farm has changed slightly somewhat over the years to be honest just because i've got a bit lazy this is i poured about that much oats into the bottom of this tub i chucked a load of mealworms in there chucked a few bits and pieces in there just a bit of decor from to climb on and stuff and literally this is how diabolical my setup is i've even got the little sieve just chucked in there. The moisture source that they get fed on, as you can tell probably by the tweezers there, is just and all the little cups that are in here. And every time I mix up some Pangea or something like that, I just chuck the leftovers in here and that supplies these with the food that they get. It's absolutely jam-packed with beetles, it's jam-packed with mealworms. Every time I need mealworms, which is not that often, which is why it's not so big, I just pick a few out, chuck them in a tub, give it to the leopard geckos, bearded dragon may have some every now and then. And they're just there in case I need them. That's the easiest way I, and the laziest way I've ever bred actual mealworms. However, directly underneath, we have got my dubia colony. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a 2021 how to breed dubia roaches, because it has changed slightly somewhat over the years. But yeah, we have absolute hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and hundreds of dubia roaches in this bin. And again, they don't really get fed that much. I, get, I feed them very lazily. Every time I have an orange, I give half of them to this. Every time I cook up some potatoes, I give half of them to this. Every time I have an apple, I give these some. Every time I've got a bit of Pangea, I give these some. The best live food um, food that I've ever used is the Reptile Systems Insect Food. I'll, again, I'll leave some links to that down in the description down below. But that's packed full of natural nutrition that we can't provide our dubia roaches in captivity. We I can talk too much about breeding live food. Can you tell it's a bit of a passion? Seven is logs. Can you see all the logs that are in here? We've got a few more logs in there. We've got a few more logs in there. We've got a load of logs in here. Absolute tons in there. Yeah, I need to clean out a water bowl a bit later. It's water bowl day, so we're gonna get them all out of every enclosure, give them a good scrub down. But logs, what logs can you use? Even my bearded dragon, Diego, has got a log in there. What logs can you use? How would you prepare them? You can basically use any hardwood log. So do your research, find out what the tree looks like, Go to the forest, find the ones that are falling down. If they're not rotten, pick them up. And I base, the best way I do the big logs is just I leave them in the repti breeze or anywhere there's good ventilation. Just let them dry out for a few months. That's basically it. Anything that is in there that thrives off the humidity that's inside the logs, they die off because the logs are going to dry out. And it's just, it's free. It's basically free. You can create really nice arboreal enclosures for your animals and it's not going to cost you a single penny and you get a cracking day out with it. Word of warning, it can get a bit OTT and you will end up driving back with a car full of logs. Speaking from experience, now eight is that. L let me explain. So we do a lot of bioactive enclosures. We've got the morning gecko build down here. We've got a, a frog build there. We've got tarantula builds. We've got a millipede build. We've got moose shield. We do an awful lot of tropical style bioactive builds. So the plants can be so expensive can't they we've got this big one to do as well we've got some kickers with this so grow your own plants 
It's quite simple, basically. You go to your local garden centre and um, pick up a few cuttings and <laughs> grow your own plants. I've been given a few of the plants. I've harvested a few of the plants. I mean, we've got some weeping dew down here, some weeping dew over there, some more over there. We've got spider plants, uh, local native plants. We've got some native plants that we're actually growing because we've got a big native build to do in a little jar enclosure down there. That's going to be quite amusing. We've got some all over the window ledge. <laughs> and uh, for that big one just there, We've been growing this big spider, well it's not a spider plant, this big cheese plant. We've been glow, growing that. What's going to be going in there? Now we're toying up between a chameleon and Mushu that's in there. If you don't know who Mushu is, Mushu is a reptile rescue, which will go on to number nine, reptile rescue centres. We deal with a lot with Cheshire Reptile Rescue because they're just a non-profit organisation. They rescue unwanted animals, but they also take in all their enclosures as well because there's a lot of people out there that will get rid of an animal to a reptile rescue so that they can have the space and the enclosure to get a new animal. That's not done, that's not a done thing, no, no. If you can't look after your animal, we'll take the enclosure as well so that we can then use that enclosure to get the money to provide to the reptile rescue and so on and so on and so on and so on. <laughs> reptile rescues, where were we? Mushu. Mushu came from a reptile rescue. He's a callus versicolor. He came to the UK in a shipment of wood We've also got Wish here, which I don't know how well you can see him. There he is. There's Wish. Wish is a Chinese house gecko and he came to the UK in a shipment of food. So the Reptile Rescue will also get wild stowaways and pass them on to people like us to be, basically be able to care for them. It's either we care for them or they get destroyed so we care for them. But Reptile Rescues also have a lot of equipment. That's where this enclosure, no, that came from TM Reptiles. That came from the Reptile Rescue, that came from the Reptile Rescue, that came from the Reptile Rescue. We have a lot of uh, equipment, water bowls, everything all lined up under there. Everything comes from the Reptile Rescue Centre because they also get deliver products. So if you need a water bowl at a lower cost, your local Reptile Rescue is bound to have one at a cheaper cost than brand new. All you need to do, the same with the enclosures, F10 disinfectant, Reptile Safe disinfectant, clean the bowl, boom. Your Reptile Rescue might even do that for you. Speak to them, see what happens, but there's definitely a way forward for you to be able to save money on decor, equipment, and animals. Number 10, which we've already covered slightly, is grow your own plants, but grow your own vegetables. So if you've got stuff like an iguana that, or tortoise that eat just vegetables, grow your own veg. You're bound to save a lot of money doing just that. Let me know what you spend all your saved money on once you've learned how to save a load of money with reptiles.